I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Luke Grimes, who portrays Casey Dutton on Paramount Network's blockbuster Western Yellowstone. First of all, um, Luke, you know, I'm really happy that Yellowstone is like well and truly one of the most successful shows on TV. And I've been a fan from the very beginning. So I've enjoyed watching people kind of cotton onto it and realizing that it's there and then getting obsessed with it. Like, you know, and that's really grown and become so huge. So how does it make you feel uh, that your show is so widely seen and so beloved? Uh, I mean, it, it only ever feels like a, you know, a win-win. Um, I know starting this show, was something that was really important to me. I, uh, uh, one of my favorite scripts I've ever read uh, and people kind of loving it and watching it and, and having the numbers grow just means we get to do it longer. Uh, and it is, it is such a dream job in the way that, um, you know, the, the cast, the crew, we all get along so well. We all love the story we're telling. We get to shoot it in a beautiful place. Um, so yeah, man, I'm thrilled. I'm, uh, couldn't be happier. Now, Taylor Sheridan is such an incredible writer in this particular genre. He's an Oscar nominee. Um, what would you say his strength is as a writer and creator? And what, what really got your attention when you first signed on to the project? I remember seeing Sicario uh, and Hell or High Water. They had both come out before I, I read this. And um, just, just thinking, man, there's something about this guy's the world that he creates that's just so intense, you know, and just, they're, they're always just so intense and such a gut punch. And I was like, you know, I was, I was just intrigued by how he could create something that always, um, it, it's, it can surprise you. It can, uh, it, it's like, uh, he always hooks you right in the beginning and then, you know, takes your breath away by the end. And I, and I felt like Yellowstone sort of did the same thing, um, even just as words on a page. It does actually, it really, <laughs> that's the one thing about Yellowstone. I, I never really know where it's headed, but I always know that it's gonna be something um, either horrifying or, you know, beautiful to look at. It's, it, it's got a, it's got the range of emotions. So I, I remember um, when John Dutton played by Kevin Costner, the amazing Kevin Costner, once said to his favorite son, Casey, um, it's the one constant in life you build something worth having, someone's going to want to try to take it. And I feel like a lot of the show is based around that whole thing. And I feel especially like season four continued and up the ante um, as the Duttons were literally, you know, and figuratively under fire from all sides. So when thinking back to when production started on season four, what were you most looking forward to given that Casey was in a pretty dire situation um, <laughs> under fire at the end of season three? Um, well, I mean, I remember going into season four, we just all felt so lucky that we were able to shoot because it was, you know, yeah. ha having what had gone on in the world and we're like, is this going to be possible? And, and thank God we had such a, you know, an amazing team of people who helped us do it safely and all that. So it just felt so lucky to be there after having quarantined for so long and, and all that. And, um, yeah, and it had been a while since we shot that, that thing at the end of three and I, and I was like, how, how, how? <laughs> Is it possible someone gets out of this situation? I, I think I even like asked him, like, do I die? Am I dead now? Like, is this over? <laughs> uh, he's like, no, you make it. I was like, okay, thank God. Uh, uh, yeah. And then just, uh, and, you know, and in, in, in the way that he always does, just wrote a terrific uh, scene and, and uh, end up becoming one of my favorite kind of sequences that we had done for Casey, just because you finally get to see him just go off. You know, I feel like, there was always something, there's always this kinetic energy with Casey and you know what he's capable of. And then, but he's always sort of, uh, he's always just felt like a, a stick of dynamite that hasn't been lit yet. You know, I feel like that sequence, he really was able to just kind of go for it and just do an old fashioned sort of actiony kind of thing. So that was, uh, that was a blast. It was a good way to come back from a long hiatus from the show. I loved it too. I loved because Casey, you're right, he's usually pretty like restrained. You know, there's shit going on underneath, but he's always, he's wound very tight. And that was a way for you to just let it loose. And it was just actually, <laughs> it was really therapeutic for the audience as well, I must say. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think drives Casey, particularly last season, to forge a path forward after that brutal attack? Was, was there some PTSD that you, that you know that you thought might have been a way for you 
wait for you to get back into his character for season four? What was driving him? I mean, it just feels like at the end of every season was like the worst possible thing that could happen. And it just kept getting worse. You know, at the end of season two, they steal his son. Like, what could be worse than that? Oh, trying to kill your entire family is worse than that. And you're like, geez, man, like just always going into it with a pretty, you know, there's it, always this thing like with, with, you know, with an actor where they always say you know, your teachers and stuff would say, like, raise the stakes. If I've seen is boring, it's because your stakes aren't high enough. And with Casey, it's like, they're always as high as possible. So, you know, the way that Taylor writes things, they're very playable. It, there's so much that you want. There's so much you're trying to get. There's so much that you're fighting for in all of these scenes. And, you know, when people love Yellowstone as much as they do, you know, that that's sort of why it is that there's the stakes are really high and, and it makes you really care about these characters because you really know what they're after, you know? You do. It's so true. I, um, I know people who are watching it, you know, a second and third time. Uh, this, that people love being immersed in this world. It's, it's a very different world. But I, well, my argument is it's actually not that different. Um, the beauty of portraying a wildly dysfunctional family like the Duttons and, uh, is how surprisingly relatable they can be because families have their ups <laughs> and downs. And ultimately, they'll do anything for each other. Well, it, not all of them, uh, particularly against a common enemy. And I, I just, at any cost, any consequence, I find that very universal. I also find it actually, as I mentioned earlier, kind of slightly therapeutic to watch. What are your thoughts on how universal the, the Duttons can be? I think at a certain point, what I started to realize was like, they, they can do and say, and especially like Beth, right? Like they do and say the things that you always wish you could in a moment, you know, like, when you when you when you walk away from a, a confrontation or some some sort of argument, you're like, man, I wish I would have said this or that would have been the perfect sort of comeback to that. I feel like the, the Duttons usually have one of those in the holster, you know, and they're like, it's just so satisfying to see, uh, you know, people stand up for themselves and, and what they believe in and in a way that's like, I mean, on the verge of comical sometimes just because of like how sort of, you know, badass these people can be. Um, and I think that's fun for people, you know, because we all don't get to behave that way. It'd be a really weird world if we all behave that way. But in the world of Yellowstone, it really works. It does. And, and like, you know, while I really admire how the show is so visually stunning, how it portrays the West, the modern West, um, it challenges traditional like ideas of how the West is often glamorized. Like this, this world that you guys are all operating in at your characters is violent, it's corrupt, it's lawless. And picking up on what we were just talking about, I love that part of the show as well because, um, you know, you know, like the Sopranos, for example, like people who are slightly hard done by, they just take justice in their own hands and they're able to just kind of do whatever they want by any means necessary to get what, where they need to go. And I just think that's slightly aspirational. That's why we love mob movies, we love the West, and that's why Yellowstone's really hit a nerve. Do you, do you ever find when you're talking to um, fans of the show that they they mention that to you, that they just love how in, this is a whole bubble where they it kind of feels aspirational almost? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, the, 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 the last name Dutton is sort of almost iconic at this point. You know, you say that and people know who you're talking about and it represents something. And I think, you know, we all kind of, uh, would love to have a family dynamic that was that strong and, and, you know, we look out for each other that much and there's just something, uh, like you said, aspirational, but also I think everyone else, you know, everyone is also in on the, the wink, wink of it all that like, this isn't real life. Uh, this is, there's a, some melodrama to this story, but it is just so satisfying. Yeah, it is. It, there certainly is. There is that melodramatic element. Um, it's sometimes operatic, particularly Kelly Riley's character. She has the really great one-liners, and sometimes I just wish I could say the same things to certain people. Um, yeah. what, what I find particularly remarkable as well, just a, a final question on on how the show's received, is that in this day and age, everything feels so polarized, divided along political ideological lines. But this is one of a few shows that traverses that. And, uh, and people from all walks of life, all political spectrums, whatever you want to call it, love this show. And does that occur to you and the cast and crew that, you know, 
this is not a red state or a blue state show. It, it'll conserve what it, that, that doesn't matter. It's it seems to really have hit a nerve with everybody. And how does that feel? Yeah, I think I think you know in the beginning, I think the reason why it didn't be, it wasn't as big as it is now. I think is because people you know just they see a cowboy hat and a gun and a horse and and assume red state or assume this is what that's going to be or be about um and i think as far as westerns go uh you know yellowstone is is very intelligent um it, it is like you said it's not it's not uh answering any questions about any political views it's raising some questions um it's talking about very specific lifestyles but not preaching anything you know and i think once people realize like, oh, this show isn't trying to tell me how to believe or how to feel. It's just a good Western for Western sake. And I think because of the family dynamics and the big themes that everyone can relate to, uh, you know, that the audience has finally uh, become sort of, you know, the coasts and the middle. Yeah, it's so true. Um, thinking more specifically about Casey, uh, I, I thought the whole Vision Quest storyline was really cool. I didn't really know what to expect because we've, you know, I've seen Vision Quests done in the past, but I love the way this one was done. Um, and it looked like it was a, I mean, I could be wrong, but it looked like it was a pretty physical shoot for you. Um, if you could just talk us through what, what that was like, was it particularly challenging to get that done um, as, as authentically as it came across? Yeah, I mean, I, I got, so excited when I read that, um, that whole sequence, because I thought, you know, uh, this show can be very literal and, um, it's very about how things work and the politics of things. And I think Casey's always felt a little more poetic to me in, in some way, you know, he's, you, you don't really see him in the courtroom as much or then, you know, he's, he's tried that a little bit, but I think, you know, he, he's, he's at his best when he's outside in the wilderness and you you get the sense that he's got that sort of sort of wild and free soul you know so that scene really spoke to that um to me and yeah you're right i didn't uh didn't really think about how hard that was going to end up being to to film it was um it was 18 degrees when i showed up that day and uh and it was an all-day ordeal and obviously i wasn't wearing a whole lot of clothing in that scene um and you know they were they, they, crew and the, and the people around me there's so many kind people they're, they're giving me socks and robes and putting me in a van that's warm in between but no it was uh it was difficult but also very rewarding and one of my you know one of my other favorite things i've gotten to do on the show but like when we think about how rewarding it was because obviously it really propels casey's narrative but what about you as as the performer who's portraying this guy you've been trading for a while now and so you you know him better than anyone else. Did did the shoot in some meta way actually do anything for you personally in terms of your growth as an actor or as a person? What was that like? Yeah, you know, I'll uh, in the biggest and most obvious way. I remember, you know, the first couple of years I'd be up uh, in Utah and Montana for four or five months, and then I'd go back to LA. And feel like I was leaving home um, just because I'd get, you'd get so in the speed of that place. And uh, so I, I've, I've ended up moving to Montana now. I live there. I live where we shoot the show, which I, you know, might not have found that without being up there so much and and seeing that world through the eyes of, you know, this character. And then actually like really, really for real falling in love with the lifestyle. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not out there on horseback every day, like chasing cows around or anything, but I'm definitely outside a lot more and my life is a lot slower uh and and uh and there's just i love it I, so i i can attribute that to the to the shoot and then just you know as an actor but like playing something that's become sort of a part of the canon you know right now it's like you, you start getting recognized for your work in ways that you hadn't before just recognized in general uh mm -hmm. and um and I didn't know how I'd feel about that, but because people really love the show and love the character, it's been, it's been, you know, it, it's a really nice pat on the back. Yeah, I can imagine it will be. Uh, everyone I speak to just absolutely adores the show. I've never heard anything bad about it. Um, and which brings me to this. When 
when your a cast was nominated at the SAGs, early, I think it was late last year, like you, you probably could have heard, heard me screaming across the earth because I was like, finally, yes, it's, this is amazing. And actually Yellowstone did really well with a lot of the awards um, over the last couple of months, Producers Guild and so forth. But it was just so awesome to see the cast at that table at the SAG Awards. It doesn't matter that you didn't win, just to be in that room um, felt really great for fans, but I can only imagine what it felt for the cast. Can you talk us through that experience? Yeah, I just, you know, we we have all really put in a lot of hard work and we we love this show. We love this story. We love these characters. And, you know, there's always there's always shows that come along that somehow for one reason or another become sort of the the darlings at, at these award shows and things. And it's not like we were all sitting around bummed that we weren't getting nominated. I think, you know, again, a nice pat on the back, but it's, you know, you don't kind of live or die for that kind of thing. It's, it you know, it's just just nice to be recognized and appreciated. And I think the fact that it did take a while and, and to kind of have that start to come around a little bit, it, you know, it, it's great. And I've, I'm so proud of all the people that I work with. And I hope that, you know, there's, there's, there's more of that sort of thing. And especially for, you know, the people behind the camera of our show and in every aspect, because there are a lot of people working really hard uh, to make some something that I think is is pretty fantastic. So uh, yeah, it, it's it just it's nice, man. And in the room itself, um, did, I mean, were you like looking forward to meeting like you know that particular actor or performer that you've always looked up to? Was that kind of what was going through your mind? You mean being in that room and just sort of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting next to Kevin Costner. I mean, that's, you know, I, <laughs> at an award show, that's like a, you know, I, if I would have, if I would have like had a cut to that moment when I was a kid, I would have been like, oh, okay. So I, I guess that's going to work out. Uh, but no, it's just all just feels like such a nice, you know, benchmark on, on, on a career. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it feels like, Hey, I, I guess I'm, I'm really doing this at this point. Yeah, I think you definitely are. And, um, mate, I'm looking forward to seeing more Yellowstone for season five. Have you started production yet? I don't think you have, right? Mm -mm. No, but that's coming. I won't ask you anything about it yet because you'll just be fired and we don't want that to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you look, mate, I'm looking forward to that. And I hope to see a lot of you guys, cast and crew, on the red carpet at the Emmys. I think the TV Academy have finally taken notice and that's a very good thing. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. And thanks for a great season four. Thanks, man. Thanks for the talk.